This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further. And especially before you realize how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back you absolute fucking loser. Seriously, don't you have anything better to do with your time? But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. For today's video, we are doing our usual ban list, wish list content. That is, normally we go ahead and just do a list of all the things I think that need to come off the list, and all the things I want to come off the list, and all those random decks I absolutely fucking hate and just want them to get mullered off the face of the earth. However, most of those decks have taken care of themselves by being fucking terrible. So I decided we're going to do a slightly different approach this time around. We're going to go ahead and do a section that discusses the ones that the players want banned. And then do a section about the ones that I kind of want as well. Now I have for once decided to try and do this a little bit more fair and balanced. Because I think it's pretty obvious that we all want fucking fairy tale snow and that grass looks greener to come back. However, I have added some caveats this time around to discuss why I think cards may not be able to come back, or why I would like them back, or what I would do to maybe balance their return from the list. And of course, some cards are going to disappear as well. Get that fucking Thanos treatment. Now, before we get stuck into the video, I do want to give a huge shout out to the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link in the description, and if you use my code RUFIO15 on their store, you'll get 15% discount off your order, you'll support the channel, and it'll make me smile. What more could you possibly want? But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the video. So as noted, we're going to start off this part of the video by discussing the cards that I think the players want as a whole to be dealt with. Now, most of these are going to be fairly obvious. I suspect most people would agree on the vast majority of these. So I think it's, again, a pretty cut and dry thing here. So we'll start off with our banned cards. We'll start off with the obvious, that is Imperial Order. This card's an absolute fucking joke. And frankly, just needs to disappear from the game. It was never, ever really an acceptable card to come back. But after the errata, I assume at some point in time that they thought this was okay. Uh, they were pretty wrong because over time... Spell cards just get more and more powerful and being able to end your opponent's turn when they rely on those to actually have a chance to stay in the game becomes even more ridiculous. It's also the fact that you can flip it as an instant negate as well with absolutely zero cost involved whatsoever. So yeah, I think for the health of the game, I think we can all agree that this card absolutely needs to go in the fucking bin. Next up on the list, of course, is the obvious Artifact Scythe. Now, I know a few people have mentioned Artifact Dagda. Really, Dagda is absolutely fine. Now, most cards that are accessible via the extra deck that can summon from the deck usually end up a bit of a problem. However, Artifact Dagda has a very limited pool of cards it can access. And since that pool is so limited, really the options that it can get aren't so insane. Artifact Scythe, however, steps across that mark and becomes an absolute fucking joke. And the reality is that even if you hit Dagda, people will just play Sanctum to get the Scythe instead, and then it makes absolutely zero difference. Scythe is the card that skips the turns. If you take it out of the game, Dagda becomes absolutely fine, Sanctum is absolutely fine, and everyone's a winner. Next up on our list of degenerate cards that don't belong anywhere near the game is Arch Nemesis Protoss. I think most people would agree that while Sword Salt is a very strong deck, it's also a pretty fair one. However, Protoss is one of the cards that changes that whole thing. Most of the time, Sword Salt is ending on one or two negates, maybe a third if they're really lucky, but ending with Protoss as well makes it an absolute joke. You can literally end your opponent's turn for the next turn, and potentially any turns after that if they have no way to deal with it. The fact that this card activates during your turn and not your opponent's turn as well is an absolute joke as well. It means that they can't do quite as many interactions as they might. A lot of people are playing things like Chalice, which they wouldn't be able to do if you're going first and you use this card. And even going second, it becomes a bit of a break the board card. It's just a joke in general. Uh, I think we can accept again that this belongs nowhere near the game. Next up on our list of bullshit cards is Harpy's Featherstorm. Now this card's been around a little while. Unfortunately, it was unplayable because nobody played any of the decks that it was relevant to. The problem is Bird Up has such easy access to this card. It is absolutely ridiculous. I do also like the part where it says that if it's destroyed, it searches you a Harpy's Feather Duster because, 
you know, that's kind of reasonable. Seriously though, this is just a complete blanket negate. If it just negated the monsters on the field, it wouldn't be half as bad, but it just straight up negates any effects your opponent activates for monsters. Just ridiculous, belongs nowhere near the game. Please get rid of this card. And then the final of our banned cards, controversial because there's one coming up that I think most people might like banned, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Our final one here is Predator Plant, Vert, Anaconda. Now, personally, I don't actually think Konami are going to hit this. We've still got more fusion cards coming out with branded fusion we've seen in the OCG, which is going to benefit from the help of this. We've also seen more Predator Plant support coming out in the OCG as well, so there's a good chance that they want to keep this around to try and help shift that product and make it playable. However, I think we can all largely agree that Vert Anaconda is definitely a problematic card. I do, however, think it will be hanging around a little bit longer. But if we got what the players wanted, I think we can safely condemn this card. Now up to our limited cards at what the players want. Firstly, we're going to have Recital Starling on here. So there's a few issues with the design of Recital Starling as a whole. Firstly, the fact that it is not a hard once per turn, which means players can go through multiples and of course overlay them and do all kinds of shenanigans. It makes the bird up deck ridiculously consistent and just turns into a negate anyway. And on top of that, it also has a secondary utility, which is that basically you set up your board. If your opponent tries to break it and leaves anything too big on the field, they get automatically punished by you getting killed the next turn because they use the recital styling effect and then just crash into whatever monsters you've got there. Now, this is a pretty strong card, but I don't think it needs to be banned just yet. I really don't think it's quite over that threshold, but it is definitely extremely potent in multiples. So I think that going to one is a perfectly fair and balanced option for this. I think that most people would agree that it would do a little bit to the deck, but not enough that the deck is no longer playable. It would still be very good, just not quite as consistent and probably end on one less negate most of the time. And then the final card on our limited section here for what the players want is Mystic Mine. Now, this is the card that I referred to earlier, which could quite easily have been in the banned pile. I will, however, argue that we don't need to get rid of Mystic Mine. Now, that's not just because I'm a player of it and I'm absolutely fucking degenerate and I actually quite like to play it in a lot of decks. It does punish a lot of super heavy combo decks to set up these oppressive boards. And whether you like it or not, those are part of the game, which means that we have to have ways the players can play that can deal with those boards. And Mystic Mine is one of those cards. Now, there are definitely some oppressive elements to it. I'm definitely not oblivious to that. However, I do think that it has its place in the game. I think, however, that most people would accept that a middle ground here of limited would be absolutely fine. It would mean if you're playing a deck that already plays field spells, you have easy access to it. But for the rest of the time, you can only really play two copies if you include terraforming. So that's really that. Now, this does, of course, fall into that same category as all the other floodgates in that they are kind of a necessary evil in the game. And as much as we may hate them and we may look at the combo decks as far more skill intensive, we do need ways to be able to deal with them. They are just setting up the same impressive boards, but they're taking 15, 20 minutes to get there instead, whereas Mystic Mind just deals with the problem instantly. I'd also argue that if it's at one, it essentially just becomes a fourth copy of Dark Rule No More at that point, which is absolutely fine. So that makes up our section discussing the card set, what I think the players won based on what I've seen and what I've discussed with people. And those are the changes that most people think would be fair and what are kind of overdue and need to be done on the list. But next up, it's all about me. That's right, we're going to talk about the cards that I think need to go or come back or be semi-limited or all of those other variations that you know that come with the list. Now, there's definitely going to be quite a bit of bias in here, but I have tried not to go as extreme as I normally would with my uh, hopes and dreams, let's say, for the game. Because actually, I think it's in a pretty fair and balanced part. And I think that some of the cards that I want back may throw that off a little bit. So I tried not to go too crazy. And of course, this is all just a wish list anyway. So what does it really fucking matter? Okay, so onto my list of cards that I would like to see on the list or off them as the case may be. So actually the cards that I would like to see banned is relatively limited this time around. Normally I have a big list of things including Multi-Faker, but you know, Alter guys kind of just played themselves by being banned, so we won't get into that. So we'll start off with Eskatos. Now this is not a problem now, but I can almost guarantee it will be in the future. It is the inverse, you might say, of Protoss. It is the rivalry to the Gozen match. 
Seriously, this card is just waiting to be abused, and it is not long before we will see this happen. So if you're going to get rid of Protoss, get rid of Eskatos as well, and take care of the entire problem. It's just a poorly designed card. It was kind of a cool idea based on the archetype. The archetype is shit. Unfortunately, there are very good decks that can, however, take advantage of these cards. Again, it's just a matter of time before this becomes a problem. Next up on my banned list is Anti-Spell Fragrance. So there's a few thoughts I had about this. Now, there is some argument that Anti-Spell doesn't have a cost, which makes up for a lot of things. However, it also isn't a free negate, and it is also not a permanent one either. So a lot of people might argue that Imperial Order is a much worse card, and that is probably somewhat true. However, Anti-Spell is essentially a pseudo one. In the modern game of Yu-Gi-Oh, one turn is a lot of time. A lot of things happen in one turn. And if you can end your opponent's turn for one turn, more often than not, that is enough to get the game. And more often than not, stopping your opponent from being able to use spell cards unless they happen to open the out, such as Twin Twisters or Cosmic Cyclone, is enough. And with the card at three, it means that even if you do stop one, there's a good chance your opponent flips the other one. Now you could then also make some argument for making it limited instead of banned, but I would also argue that that then just becomes another Imperial Order situation in that if you luckily open the card, you just get to end your opponent's game. You then don't prep for it because it's a one-off that you shouldn't really have to deck build around, which is exactly what it will become if we go down that route. And so, in my opinion, ban the motherfucker. And that is my short and sweet list for the cards that I would like to see banned personally. However, we still have much to go. We're off to Isengard to go find the Hobbits. We are off on a little adventure to go and find out what the fuck else I want on this list. So the first of our limited cards, I would like to see Fairy Tale Snow. Now I am well aware that a lot of people despise this card. I, however, love it and this is really just about me. I do, however, think at three it would be absolutely ridiculous. However, I think as a one of it's absolutely fine in the game. It doesn't do all that much insane stuff. But it is a pretty strong card. And I think it's fine again at one. I think gone are the days where we're going to see these absolutely insane decks just abusing this card. I think it would just be a good, nice little nonsense piece for the decks that are able to access it and would make good use of it. Next up we have that grass looks green. Now this is a card that I would absolutely love to see. Just come back to three and let's all play 60 card decks. However, that's not going to happen. And again, this is just a wish list and I realise that this is probably a little bit unrealistic. However, I would love to see grass back at 1, just to see the difference in deck building that we might see in the game. Next up on my limited options here is actually two cards that go hand in hand, at least in my opinion, and this is more of a balancing act than anything else, but I'd love to see Lunar Light Tiger back at 1. This was a deck that I personally absolutely loved playing, and I think that Lunar Light Tiger, whilst it is an absolutely busted card, I think that most of the recursion comes from Yellow Martins. If you limit that at the same time, you then deal with the fact that people are just going to sort of almost infinitely loop this card. So whilst they may get like a free rank 4 out of it, it pretty much ends there for the most part. And really a free rank 4 in this game isn't that big of a deal when you see some of the shit that people are pumping out at the moment. Next up on the limited, August Harp Horror. Yep, some people are going to be having some Vietnam style flashbacks right about now, but I think a lot of people would like to see an injection of something different into the game. And I think that Orcus Harp Horror would bring that. It would mean that a lot of people try out the engine, but honestly it would not shock me whatsoever if we saw it fall by the wayside pretty quickly after it came. We see all the time when these cards come off the list, people are absolutely terrified about what they can do in the game. Now I do think that Orcus Harp Horror is a little bit stronger than most, but honestly I don't think it's the end of the world if it came back to one. Now, one of the things you should be concerned about if that happens is that a lot of people will be playing Orcus packages, which means a lot more Dingesus, which by extension means a lot more Zeus. So we should probably limit Zeus to go along with it as well. Although it's not a direct Orcus hit if we bring back the Harp Horror, it does also take care of those decks that eventually down the line are going to exist that just spam out Zeus because multiple Zeus is a bit of a fucking joke. So bring Harp back to one, bring Zeus down to one, and I think that things will remain relatively balanced. So next up on my limited section is Trap Dust Shoot. Now this may seem pretty controversial. The card is very strong, don't get me wrong, but I think at one you actually deal with a lot of the problems with the card itself. The problem with the card is that if you see it turn one, and that is what makes the card very strong, you have to see it turn one for it to be good. Well, if it's limited, you can't trap trick it, and the chances you open it are pretty slim at best. The other thing is it only works if your opponent has four or more cards in their hand, so there is some restrictions there. And it can also only take care of one monster card in it and return it to the deck, 
which, in my opinion, is almost worse than a pointer of the Red Lotus in a lot of ways. Let's compare the two. A pointer of Red Lotus, you pay 2,000 life points, which nobody cares about. You reveal your entire hand, which nobody cares about at this point. You look at your opponent's hand and banish any one card until the end of your opponent's next end phase. So it gets banished personally for a lot longer of a time. If they need to be able to search those cards, they could have done with Dust Shoot. They still have access to them. Whereas with the point, they really don't. Uh, there's no minimum requirement on your opponent's hand. It banishes any card at all. And currently this card is at three, so it can be trap tricked. It it's likely to be opened in your hand even if you just play three copies. I would argue that a point is far worse than a card in a lot of ways. And I think the Trap Dust Shoot should be able to come back to one with no issues whatsoever. Now onto our semi-limits. Firstly, I have Trickstar Light Stage. I know a lot of people will balk at the idea of encouraging people to play Trickstar. But honestly, the deck is really not going to do anything. And I think even with Light Stage at 2, it probably still wouldn't. Now, there is some concern, of course, about the shenanigans of summon any two monsters and make X card. However, we seem to have absolutely accepted that bitter fucking pill already with Predapad, Vert, Anaconda. So what's the difference here? Light Stage is Light Stage. Sure, it's searchable with like Terraforming and a couple of other cards. But you basically have to play the deck or at least a decent sized Trickstar engine, which in and of itself is just... Okay, it's been power crept pretty badly over time. So honestly, I don't think it would be too insane. I think you could get away with it. So I'd put light stage to two and just see how it gets on. As a worst case scenario, you knock it back down to one. But honestly, I think it'd be fine. Now there is a caveat to that. We might want to be careful about doing that along with Harp Horror because we then get back to the days we were before. However, Nightmare Mermaid is dead and buried and there is no plans even on my wish list to bring that fucking card back. And then our final of our semi-limited cards here, Salaman Great Circle. Just give them two fucking circle. Honestly, Salaman Great is a super fair deck. It was very strong at the time. However, I don't think it would be that insane. And I really don't think adding a second circle will do anything. They've been given Mirage Stalio, which is arguably a lot more powerful. And that's done absolutely nothing for the deck. So at best, you give them another circle. It adds another deck to rise up to that kind of tier two category. But probably it still remains pretty rogue and therefore... Makes absolutely no difference to the meta game. And then our final card on today's wish list is actually an unlimit, and funnily enough, it's a little bit against the grain of things that I would normally do, but I'm gonna go ahead and say Performer Pal, Skullcrabat, Joker. That's right, we can put this card to three, it will do absolutely fuck all. Honestly, pendulums are completely unplayable at the moment, more or less, unless your name is Steven Trifonoski, in which case you've got some fucking weird magic bean juice thing that you drank and that makes you good with the deck, but nobody else is capable of fucking playing it, and I don't think giving them three Skullcrabat is going to make any damn bit of difference. Seriously, I think the deck is going to remain in a bad place until we get Electromite back to one, which I'd be absolutely fine with. However, they're coming up with that thing that is basically a pseudo-retrained somewhat sort of thing, and so I don't think they'll bring it back just yet. And that, my friends, is all for today's absolute fucking nonsense. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, hopefully you have enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe, or at least hate it enough that you can, you know, possibly look away. Or maybe if you're already subscribed, you now hit that notification button. But either way, thank you very much for coming along. Once again, a massive thank you for being one of the few who make it this far into the video. I do genuinely appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.